folks here that should be doing something. Well, good people, I bid you welcome as we gather this gather together this morning to make you for a team. Some of you have already worked out that I'm not farther in, which is sort of a good thing. I think you know the, the drill better than I do. So. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God's God, kingdom and power forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Come to me, all that all you that are weary and, and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Let's pray for Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfect in love for you and work in the name of our Lord God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the great name of Christ, glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory, Lord of Jesus Christ, and only Son of God, Lord of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ has taught us that what we do for the least of his brothers and sisters, we do also for him. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, yet lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated for the readings. Let me give you a little introduction to the readings. There is a strong theme of loyalty to God and reciprocal response to this loyalty in the assurance of the accompaniment of God in human endeavour. The Genesis reading follows the journey of Abraham's servant as he searches for a wife for Isaac. The key text in this reading is verse 48. I bow down and worship the Lord. I praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who led me on the right road. And I'll say a bit more about that later. The psalm is a royal psalm celebrating a royal wedding. The Romans reading is theologically rich, rich and complex. In relating his personal struggle to do good, to do the good he intends, Paul is addressing the common human struggle. He confesses, I do not do the good I want to do. He concludes by affirming his trust in God's accompaniment. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Gospel reading is in two parts. The first, the children who cannot agree on the games they play, is a reference to the mixed response to John the baptizer and the rabbi Jesus. The second contains Jesus' prayer, reflecting on the mystery of the divine revelation and the invitation of the tired and disillusioned to come to Jesus for rest. In the Old Testament, we're following through the, uh, the Abraham saga. So reading from Genesis. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. 
The Lord has blessed my master abundantly and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, men servants and maid servants, and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son in her old age and he has given him everything he owns. So my master made me swear an oath and said, you must go, you must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife for my son. When I came to the spring today, I said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See, I am standing beside the spring. If a maiden comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar, and if she says to me, drink and I'll draw water for, you, for your camels as well, let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water. And I said to her, please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I'll water your camels too. So I drank and she watered the camels also. I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, who Milcah bore to him. Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms. And I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may know which way to turn. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of our enemies. Then Rebecca and her maids got ready and mounted the camels and went back with the men. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac had come from Beor, Lehi, and was living in the Negev. He went out to the field one evening to meditate and he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, who is that man in the field coming to meet us? <clears throat> he is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all that he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. For the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank, thank you, God. God. The Psalm 145. <coughs> Um, the same Bible terms verses. Listen, O daughter, consider and give ear, forget your people and your father's house. The king is called by your beauty, honour you, for he is your Lord. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift, men of wealth will seek your favour. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. Her embroidered garments, in embroidered garments, she is, she is led to the king. A virgin companion follow her and are brought to you. They are led with joy and gladness. 
Faith is the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. Another interesting reading. <laughs> this is part of a very uh, serious piece of writing by St. Paul, and sort of generally regarded as the gospel according to St. Paul. Uh, and he's really uh, one of his big wrestles here is that do I, do, do I abide by the Old Testament law to the letter of the law, as in fact I was brought up to be as a Jew, or do I follow the new law, the new commandment? And so he's wrestling with that. He's also wrestling with uh, the sin, uh, and it's something he sees within the light of the church, and he's wrestling it through here. So it's a bit of a complicated reading, and we really need to sit down and have a cup of coffee and work this one through. <laughs> The letter to the Romans, chapter 7. We know that the Lord, law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do. For what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find, so I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law. But in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> Stand for the reading of the Gospel. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew chapter 11, beginning of verse 15. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever has ears, let them hear. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others, we played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. But John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you are, you are pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. 
All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, bless, glorious, and holy truth, source of all being, eternal word, and life giving spirit. Amen. 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 It was a bit surreal being here with you this weekend. It's the first time I've been in, to church last night. It's the first time I've been to church since before Easter. Even more significant, this is the first weekend of receiving Holy Communion in that time. It's been the longest estrangement of the sacred encounter for me in over half a century. I suspect it is much the same for many of you also. I just want it all to go away so I can get back to what it was and the way things were that I know and value. But I keep hearing that that is not largely going to happen for a long time, if ever. In fact, the message to us as a society and to us as church in particular is that we need to adjust to a new normal. So you find that as challenging as I am? As I sit in the sun on Sunday morning with my empty coffee cup in hand after watching my Sunday service on, the, on my iPad, I've been reflecting on the new now for me. Probably wondering whether I'll ever go back to the hard cues again. Where do I now find God in this strange time of global disruption where an invisible little evil is corrupting and challenging any sense of goodness in the created order? So if you've been like me asking, God, where are you in the face of this canker eating into our world with such destruction? Some will even want to ask, God, why do you allow this to happen? In a way, I find this soul searching very valuable. It forces me to reflect on how I perceive God and now church in my life. When I was young, it was so simple. Go to church on Sunday and through the week, obey the law and love your neighbour. A capricious God sat in heaven, ruling over us down here. God was a supreme heavenly monarch who required obedience and good behaviour of all the citizens of his common, the church. Well, obedient enough to keep us out of you know where. Probably like you, I've, gr I've now grown somewhat out of that conscious, out of that, conscious of the promise or really the threat of Jesus, the human face of a God, to be with us always. An ever-presence of God. And the Psalm 139 sums it up for me, where can I go to escape you, God? It is not surprising then we began this gathering acknowledging that presence when we say to each other, the Lord be with you, or probably May the Lord be with you. In this greeting, we acknowledge the presence of our God not only in our gathering, but also dwelling in our very being. If nothing else, we gather together to remember and celebrate that presence that dwells with us and holds us together. So as I sit in front of my little screen and hear these words coming out, mysteriously of my device, I'm reminded that even in the midst of inconvenience and curbing of interaction with those who are important to me in my life, that my God is ever present to me and to you. 
So that even now and into the future, the familiar and the confronting and the company may never be the same. But our God is there, guiding and accompanying us into the new and formidable. So I hope you remember this when Ian comes back from his holidays all bright, bright eyed and bushy tailed and tries to guide you into what the church would look like tomorrow. Now I found this little snippet from my daily devotional reading supportive and encouraging. God is not only there when we are alone or in difficulty, for he is always with us in all circumstances of our lives. But in times of distress, we can appreciate anew that our God is ever watchful, faithful, and a present help in time of trouble and of change. So, where did all that come from, you may say? Surprisingly, it was prompted by my ruminating over today's strange mixture of readings. These readings are from separate cycles of readings with a psalm selected as an antiphonal response to the Old Testament reading. But I found two themes in them that touched my thinking as I socially distanced myself from the world and those around me. Firstly, an incredible trust, trust in God in the midst of life's struggles. In the Gospel, however, it is more an invitation to trust as we embrace kingdom of God ways. And secondly, the certainty of God's accompaniment in the midst of those struggles. Indeed, that is one of the great themes of St Matthew's Gospel, the accompaniment of God, Emmanuel, <coughs> God with us. So, in the first reading, Abram's servant is sent beyond the horizon to find a suitable wife for his master's son. A daunting and formidable task, but for one thing, an incredible trust in his master's God. The story had seemed a bit impulsive, in the story it seemed a bit impulsive to put the ring in the nose of his selection. It go down well today, wouldn't it? <laughs> but his prayer revealed more than an act of expedience. And I bow down and worship the Lord. I praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has led me on the right road. I praise the God of my master Abraham, who has led me on the right way. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me, have I made the right choice? And if not, also tell me, so that I may know which way to turn. As I face the future, in continuing uncertain times, this reminds me to have a trust and confidence in my God who is ever with me, to likewise be guided to know the right way to go into the new now, to face the future. Initially, St. Paul's struggle seems to be more like capitulation and despondency rather than trust. Well, I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. I could not then echo those words. But if I have a God within to lead me on the right path, my real struggle is not about God's faithfulness to accompany me and even lead me on the right path but for me to listen, to deeply listen to the still, small voice of my God leading me. I need to put away my desire to see the things the way I want. Paul keeps beating himself up as he explains, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me? Well, Paul is being dramatic. To emphasise the point he is trying to make when he says, thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God 
to deliver us. Paul reminds me that my faithfulness in listening to God often wavers. But the grace and forgiving benevolence of God always accompanies us. The question before me is what sort of world and church do we now have opportunity to create to more fully reflect and more truly reflect the kingdom of God? What sort of church do we have the opportunity to create that reflects the kingdom of God? As I said earlier, one of the foundations of St. Matthew's Gospel is the conviction of the divine accompanying, the Emmanuel, God with us. The end of today's Gospel reading is an invitation to live out that divine accompaniment as kingdom of God people, to live it out. This ought to be a familiar invitation as a part of the old prayer book invitation to Holy Communion. And when I wrote this, I didn't realise that we would actually incorporate that into the service we use today. So silly. An invitation to holy communion, that holy engagement with the divine accompaniment. Now, we used to call it the comfortable words, but it is more than just that. It is a call to discipleship. Come to me, not just to have a holy communion, a holy fellowship, this come to me is the same call Jesus gave to his disciples. The call to all who are weary and heavy laden with the cares and worries of this world is a call to all of us. It is an open invitation to us to be disciples. A call we all need to heed if we intend to call ourselves Christian. Jesus invites you and me, not someone else. Jesus invites you and me to take up my yoke and learn from me. This yoke of Jesus is the yoke of discipleship, the task Jesus himself calls his church to bear. This yoke is the task of proclaiming and living out in daily life the kingdom of God. The yoke is the proclaiming and living out in daily life God's kingdom. A call to be a people focused as a participant, called to be a participant in the mission of God and not just a consumer of church services and religion. All the readings I've been doing, that's the bane of the church, to move us into being participants and not just consumers in the consumer age. It comes with the assurance of Jesus himself. Learn from me. Learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. With a divine accompaniment, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we do it with Emmanuel. So, as we venture into the new now, let us join the prayer of Abraham's servant. Bow down and worship the Lord and say with him, Praise be the Lord, the God of our forefather Abraham, who has led me and led us as church on the right road through these disruptive and turbulent times. May we also be bold enough to take the yoke of discipleship that Jesus offers and learn what he means when he calls us to follow him and learn the ways of the kingdom. To learn and to live out the ways of the kingdom. For he is gentle and humble in heart and in him we will find rest for our souls.
but stand and join with me in the affirmation. Some of you may remember my fetish about commons and clauses and not the gavel. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of one life, life from life, true God of true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through keeping all things alive. For us, for our salvation, he can now was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and he made a pure creation. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose his hand in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and glory to judge our living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken yes, through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. To look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray for the world and for the church. I want you to begin the, the sessions with me and uh, use the parish prayer. Truly a prayer, God will guide us into the new now. Pray. Renew us, O oh God, the zeal for your love. Let our courage come alive with the power of your spirit. Where we will fail, forgive us. Where we will persevere, encourage us. Where we will down, direct us. Help us to see new opportunities for witness and service. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let's offer our prayers for the, the world in this time of great crisis. Not only are we facing this time of the great health issues, the pandemic, but also the geopolitical murmurings and undercurrents that are unsettling. But God our Father, we lift before you our world in need and pray for the leaders of the nations that in wisdom and generosity they may lead us way that serves the well-being of all your people. We bring before you all those who are engaged in this war against the, the pandemic. Strength and courage for those in the front line. Thanks to the wisdom of those who are guiding us in this nation and indeed this state. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, also, bring before you your church in the midst of this great disruption. Give us wisdom as we walk forward. the strength to listen more clearly to you and seek your grace and guidance in the future we are creating. That we as church may, may more faithfully live out your kingdom. Pray for 
bishops. For Philip, for Cameron, Jeremy, and John. The clergy and people of your church and this diocese, this parish for Ian and all who minister with him. wisdom as we seek to follow your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and each other, for our families, our loved ones and our friends. Enable us by your spirit to live in love for you and for one another. Be more aware of our neighbours. And those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you the sick and the suffering and the needy and those who have sought our prayers. In particular, we pray this day for Anne Howe, Baby Odin, Peter Tranter, Jill Daniels, Brett, Phil Henderson, Damien, Damien Vale, Patricia McMullen. Duncan Pegg, Kenneth Treverden, Wendy Lindsay, Oliver, Michelle Doherty, Linda, Nola, and those known to us, and those not known to us, who are struggling with respiratory infections and diseases at this time. Pray for those involved in research and seeking to find a vaccine. Lord, have mercy. Here I pray. Give thanks for those who have gone before us. Give this stage, give thanks for the lives of Kate Brand, Dorothy Chadwick, Marjorie Barrett. Frank Wellington, Dorothy Callaghan, Bill Brown, Frederick Pottinger, Madge Carter, Herbert Worth, Mary Nash, Ted Best, Walter Hickley, William Bowers. Those known to us and those who are dear to us. Rest eternal grant of them, O Lord. Let thy perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. We bring these and all our prayers to you. In the words of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, Amen. Amen. hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us to not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord is the kingdom of power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We do not presume to come to the faithfulness of the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, though you have been a whole and of great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up a crumb from your faith, but you are the Lord, whose nature is always to have in Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so that we be led to the dear Son of Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that we may have more of him and have he in us. Friends, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. So let us confess our sins in penitence and pray confidently in God's forgiveness. 
merciful God, and make it our judge. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. God forgive us, strengthen us with love and obey you in the unity of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God has promised that he will restore the eternity of faith, pardon you, and set you free from all your sins, firm and strengthen you in all things, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I can stand there for a brief of peace. Good people, we are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. us. Hallelujah. Peace of the Lord be you. Just are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness, have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Let's be God forever. The mystery of the small from wine will become shared in the drink of Christ, will help us to share in humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness of this wine, to offer fruit of the vine and work with human hands, will become for us our spiritual bread. Blessed be God. So, Lord God, we ask you to receive us and please the sacrifice of being humble and humble. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rise into new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtain an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels who all accompany of heaven, we proclaim your praise and your glorious name, and for more praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Satan, the highest. Will this receive you, crowns in the name of the Lord, O Satan, the highest. Merciful. We thank you now for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. For the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. 
I'm going to give a thanks to you, his almighty Father. He broke it, gave to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this remembrance of me. After supper, took the cup and again, giving you thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. again. Therefore, do as I say to this commandment, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate this bread of this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with him and in whom in the union of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. 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 This is broken bread, was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread. So many of your church are gathered from the ends of the world to your people. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeem the world, have mercy on us. So the gifts of God for the people of God come to take this holy sacrament body and blood of Christ, in remembrance he died for us, to us feeling him in our hearts by faith to cleanse him. of Christ, the bread of heaven, and death. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally go to the table where all your saints feast with you forever. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace and thankfully and courage in the power of this spirit. You know, the peace of God which passes all understanding, give your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And bless you, God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Hero of life and love, who we can now always. Do you have any notices? Anything important? Not one of those places sing happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Sort of thinking this morning as I've been celebrating the Eucharist in a way, I wonder how dear old Archbishop Cram would feel about what we're doing today. Of course, the Reformation was about on about that of restoring the chalice to the people. And we snatched it away from them. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Interesting times. And yet in the midst of all that, part of my wrestling, not if I gave it to but wrestling, what's it going to be like? You know? And how do I go with God in that one and hear what God is saying to us? Well, I was finding, I hope you're finding as challenging as I am. The God in this wonderful sacrament of Levi Glass and more of the cross and the passion, grant us out of the right sacred mystery of your body and blood. That we may always receive in ourselves a food of revolution. This remains the part of the Holy Spirit, ever one God doing with our hand. This is Mary, this is John, all the saints pray for us. Souls are basic part of the love and message of this in peace, of Christ and good. So now we people go in peace, the love and service in the name of Christ. Amen.